Buckle up. Hang on. We're fixing to board a roller coaster. And we're going to ride exciting today. As we get ready to welcome the famous one and only <laughs> Pastor Todd Christopher. Love you, man. Sit down. <laughs> yes, I am the man. Not really, I just know the man. Something I want to add to that, the tithe, and, and then we'll get started. We don't know what, what Alan said when he said it's time for us to bless him. And I get that. But before I started giving my money the way that I should give my money, I had to think of it a different way. Y'all got to turn me down. I'm getting... What I had to think of it is, I'm not giving that money to bless God. I'm giving that to him to bless me back with. That everything I gave to him was just going to get given back to me tenfold. And that helped me understand that tithing was real. That, that giving my money to God was real. And that helped me. So here we are. Y'all see some mirrors up here. There's going to be a lot of moving parts today. So y'all got to head, hands, and feet inside the vehicle at all times. Okay? If you need a helmet, I would suggest putting on a helmet. These mirrors, some of you can look at yourself. Some people, like Lindsay and Sharon, strategically got in front of them so they could look at themselves. No, maybe that's Alan. That's more Alan. That's Alan. So these mirrors create a reflection. Okay? To let you see who you are. They let you see what other people see when you, when you look up here. So how many people like looking in the mirror? Well, I do. Now, I ain't going to lie. I'm just saying. But do you always like what you see? I do now. I do now. I've told everybody. I look in the mirror every morning. I say, God, you did good when you made me. That's a reminder. That's not an ego boost. That's a reminder to me that, that, that God's real and he made me, me. And he did okay. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter. I do because he made me. But I didn't like my reflection a long time. Now, I didn't hear yet. I got something that I like Disney movies. So let me just tell y'all, I got a, it's been a couple months, I think, probably since I talked to, even talked to Michael about it. Everybody ever seen The Lion King? Raise your hand. We've all seen The Lion King. We know Simba and Mufasa and Rafiki, the little funky monkey that I called him. Little baboon, just a cool little dude. And the little pig. What's the pig's name, Rebecca? Come on. Timba. Pumba. Pumba. There we go. It's something. He's a little pig. All right. That's what he is. So I watched that movie and a yeah, warthog. Chris corrected me. Go figure. So I watched this movie, and I broke down as I watched it, as I, I cried like a pitiful, somebody stole my lollipop cry. Like I was tore up. And I'm going to touch on just a little bit now, because my life kind of emulated the Lion King and Simba. And y'all are looking at me like, where are you going with this? I want everybody in this room before today's over with to remember who you are. Okay? I want you to remember who you are. In this movie, Simba was a little baby lion, a little lion cub. Well, his daddy was Mufasa. He was the king. 
he was overseeing Pride Rock. That was his place. Well, Simba, just because he was the son of the father, just because he was the son of Mufasa, that was his inheritance. That was his. So along through the story, Mufasa's brother, Scar, the bad dude, killed Mufasa and tried to blame Simba for it because Simba had ran off into the elephant graveyard. That's what it was. And he wasn't supposed to. And then he got hung up in a stampede of all these crazy looking buffalo things. Okay? The kids, y'all pay attention too. Y'all gonna get this. Well, when Simba was hung up in that stampede and Mufasa went to save his son, how many daddies in here would go save their son if he was hung up in some stampede in his life? Whatever that case may be. How many of us would do that? I'd lay down and die right now if I had to and wouldn't think twice about it. Can, y'all, can we pause two minutes and let me do something? It is my honor to welcome my granddaughter, Bravery Zion Kite. Y'all come on down here. This is Pop's girl. So this is Bravery. It's her first Sunday here, so. Y'all check out on the board up there. I think she looked at Alan. I'm a little proud. So let's get back on this Simba deal. So when Simba was in trouble, his father came to help. And when his father came to help, things happened and he ended up in, and was killed. And Simba's uncle, Scar, made Simba believe that it was his fault. That he did it. And he told Simba to run away because he it wasn't wanted. They wouldn't want you here. You killed your father. So Simba runs away. Isn't it strange, kind of in, in life, when we get in trouble or things tend to happen that we wander around lost in the world we try to hide from our past we try to hide from our fears we try to hide from the words from other people the hateful mean things that other people say we wander around as Simba did lost not knowing where to go. Simba. Simba. Who are you? You lost soul. Where are you going? What are you looking for? Simba, you don't have to be like anyone else, but you do need to know who you are. You are more than the sum of your past mistakes. You are able to break through the wall of shame. You are more than a conqueror. Son, you've been redeemed, bought with a price, created in the image and likeness of God. Today, I call you chosen. 
Today, I call you royalty. You are a part of a holy nation of people. You are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus and predestined to do good works. Today, you are my son. Today, you and I are united in spirit. We are not divided. We are one. So go, Simba. Go, my son, and reclaim the years that were stolen from you. Go and reclaim your rightful destiny. How many of us have been like Simba, wandering lost? Whether it was a fault of our own or not, we forget who we are. 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. It says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when He is revealed, that we shall be like Him. For we shall see him as he is. And then 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? I'm going to share one video. Actually, I've got two. I want you guys to watch this one that she's going to pull up. These are clips from The Lion King. So we're having a good time. I know your father. I hate to tell you this, but he died a long time ago. Nope! Wrong again! <laughs> He's alive! And I'll show him to you. You follow old Rafiki. He knows the way. Come on! <laughs> Don't do it! Hurry up! Hey, whoa, wait, wait! Come on! Come on! Slow down. Stop. Shh. Look down there. That's not my father. It's just my reflection. No. Look hard. You see, he lives in you. Looks like the winds are changing. Ah, change is good. Yeah, but it's not easy. 
I know what I have to do, but going back means I'll have to face my past. I've been running from it for so long. Ow! Jeez, what was that for? It doesn't matter. It's in the past. <laughs> yeah, but it still hurts. Oh, yes, the past can hurt. But the way I see it, you can either run from it or learn from it. Ah! You see? So what are you going to do? First, I'm going to take your stick. No, 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 no! Not your stick! Hey! Where are you going? I'm going back! Good! Go on! Get out of here! So at the first part of this movie, Mufasa and Simba are sitting at Pride Rock. Mufasa is showing his son his inheritance. But he also shows him as, as Simba's getting all pumped up because he's going to be the man. They also, he gets shown some boundaries when Mufasa says you're not to go here. You're not to do this. All of this is yours. Just don't go to this one place called the shadow we place is dangerous and out of bounds and that was the elephant graveyard but what did Simba do he went there and when he went there he almost got killed by the hyenas so he was warned for not to go how many of us curiosity just killed a cat whatever the case may be we know the things in life we're not supposed to do but how many of us have been given so much and told, don't do that. I'm giving you all this. So that's how the movie started with Simba and, and Mufasa. And then as Simba took off and as he ran, and he, got, he ran away and he ran away and he met the crazy monkey. And, and this, this scene here happened. At this scene, By the time this scene happened and he was looking at his reflection, I was crying. I was a puddle. Because it, it just reminded me of me. All I could see was me. I didn't see Simba anymore. I saw Todd. I saw my life that I ran for my calling for so stinking long. And then I ran for my mistakes that I made and didn't want to face people. I wanted to run away and hide in Never Never Land, wherever Simba went to, and hang out with the crazy baboon. It took a crazy baboon to show Simba and lead him to who he really was. I'm not going to tell you who the, my crazy baboon was. But I, every one of us has a crazy baboon in our life. That's trying to lead you where you should be. And just like the little monkey hit him in the head with a stick. I got beat half to death with a stick. And I still didn't get it. But I finally... Finally, just like when Simba walked up and he looked down and he said, oh, that's just my reflection. And then the monkey reaches down and just kind of stirs the waters a little bit. Okay? He stirs the water a little bit. That's kind of like what's going on in praise and worship. We're just stirring the waters up. And when he stirred those waters up, he said, look harder. And when he looked harder and Simba saw beyond himself, when he saw beyond himself, he saw his father. And that was a key moment in the whole movie that defined everything else that went down. Because Simba saw his father's image in him. When Rafiki says, the question is, who are you? Simba didn't know. He didn't know who he was. 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Where we place our identity affects our foundation in life. Our peace and our choices are affected. If we've surrendered our life to Christ, then we are a child of Him and that changes everything. It changes everything. When Mufasa spoke up and said, you've forgotten me, Simba said, no, I haven't. I know who you are. He clarified. He says, you've forgotten who you are. Therefore, you have forgotten me. 
All of Simba's troubles can be traced to his deliberate running away from his identity and from who he was. Running away from his past meant running from everything his father had taught him. I wasn't taught to run from my past. past. I was taught to face. Face my enemy. Face my adversary. Face my problems. Face my struggles. Be honest. Be up front with them. I knew all that stuff. But I still ran from it. Because I was afraid of what other people were going to think. And what other people were going to say. And how they were going to talk about me. Mufasa had given Simba all the instructions he needed to step into his role. And to save his family from Scar. But he had to be reminded of who he was first. Now realize it's easy sometimes to forget that we're children of God. That's a mouthful, right? I'm standing in church saying sometimes it's easy to forget that I'm a child of God. I'm an heir. A joint heir. Whatever is his is mine. It don't mean I'm going to inherit it. An heir means I enjoy it now. I own it now. Not later. I'm a joint heir now to him. I've never lived my life that way. Well, when I die, I'll have this. I'll get my mansion one day. And I want it now. Because it says I'm a joint heir, so I can have it now. And if that's how we would live our life and not worry about our past and yesterday and run from it and go running through the elephant graveyard with Lala or what was the little, girl, little, little lion cubs? It was his girlfriend. Nala. Nala. Running around with Nala. Nala was trying to teach him what he should be doing, but he wasn't listening to Nala. Y'all figure a man or a boy not listening to a girl? A husband not listening to a wife? I mean, it was even in the movie. He didn't want to hear what Nala had to say. He had so many people trying to push him and teach him where he should go, but he was so focused on who he thought he was. He only saw his reflection. When the world offers us silver and gold, we forget. We forget to tithe. We forget to help others. We're too busy fattening our bank accounts. When society pressures us to just go with the flow, oh, it's cool, just, just roll with it. No, we forget. When troubles come up and threaten our comfort, our safety, we forget. When we mess up and the consequences are too hard for us to handle, we forget. I forgot. But forgetting means throwing away the tools that we need to work through all these tough situations. God's given us his word to guide us. And if we remember that we belong to him, we walk their head held high through any valley we end up in. Yeah. Any valley. Just like Simba ended up in a valley that he wasn't supposed to be in. And then he ended up in a stampede and problems came up. And here come Mufasa to the rescue to save Simba. And Mufasa gave his life saving his son. Jesus Christ gave his life to save me. And if you pay real close attention when, that, when, when the little crazy monkey's speaking, Mufasa or Simba says, you knew my father. The monkey says, I know your father. And he said, I hate to inform you, but my father died months ago. He said, no, he lives. If y'all can't see a God and Jesus and us and watching the Lion King, you need to be in the altar. Everybody in here is, we're about to break YouTube with people going home and Googling to watch The Lion King. And I've got these mirrors up here. And just like Simba, when he looked in that mirror, what did he see? These are not for decorations. These are for you to use today. If you've got something going on, if you've forgotten who you are, at any time with me up here, I want you just to walk up and look at yourself in that mirror. Just walk up. And I believe when you do, God's going to change what you see. Because you're going to have to look closer. But it's going to take that act from you 
to walk up and look. If there's things that you've got in your life that you're carrying that are just bogging you down and you don't know who you are, come look. But don't be afraid. You might not like what you see to start with. You may end up looking through clouded, teary eyes. But if you look long enough, God will show you who you are. You've got to look harder. You are more than what you have become. That was what Mufasa said. Mufasa said you're more than what you become. Simba threw away the responsibility of being king. Because of the guilt of his father's death that was put on him by somebody else. So he missed his blessing. He missed his calling because of guilt that he carried from someone else that they put on him. Christians, we get bogged down by our past. We drag around buckets full of sins, memories, wounds, and words. And we wonder why our Christian walk is so hard. Let go of your daggone bucket. Just saying. We wonder why it's hard. We wonder why things are hard. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. That's Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Just like Mufasa told Simba, we are so much more than what we have become. Don't dwell on the past. The past doesn't have to be years ago. The past was a while ago. And for those that don't understand that language, that was a minute or two ago. A while ago, a minute or two ago. There, there's some folks in here that ain't from around here. Okay? So a while ago was a few minutes. That, 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 was, that was the past. Forget all that. I mean, for, forget that. Don't drag it around with you. God's called you to be something so much more than what you think you are. Yeah. Yeah. Every single person in this church whether whatever position you hold or whatever worship you do, God's called you for even more than that. Yeah. Yeah. He's called you for so much more. I didn't realize that. I was a, a, a broke down, lying, cheating, whatever you want to call me for a long time. As I wandered through the darkness with the little pig, what, Timba, Timbuktu, Pumbaa, whatever the little thing's called. You know, as I wandered around in the, in the wilderness, running away from what God had really called me to do, that determined at that point who I was. My choices to run around, that, that was determining who I was. That determined how people saw me because of where I was going. And that was difficult. When Mufasa appeared in the sky telling Simba to look inside himself and that he's more than what he was, really got me. The way he helped Simba understand what he needed to do can be the same way God can talk, us through, talk to us through visions, through his word or through prayer. He may be telling you how you can take your place and make a change for his kingdom. And you may be running. And you may be scared of your past or scared that somebody, you know, might think something strange of you or might blame you for your father's death. Rafiki told Simba to look harder. You see, he lives in you. If we look hard enough, we know God is living in each and every one of us because the scripture says he does. The scripture says he does. The scar telling Simba that it was his fault that Mufasa died. That's kind of like Satan making us believe the lies about ourselves, our past, and even our future. So just imagine next time you watch this movie, Scar is Satan. And then watch the movie. Simba wanted his father back. He felt lost without him. And Rafiki showed Simba that even though he feels alone, he wasn't. Do you know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? That's 1 Corinthians 3.16. Just because we can't see or touch God doesn't mean He's not there. He doesn't interact with us the same way another person might because He isn't a person. 
but his spirit lives in us. And when life feels impossible, know that you're never alone. The cool part about some of this that really got to me later, because all I could do was think about me and my, my past and my junk and my stuff. And just like I, I've told this to the youth, and I'm going to share it with you guys, then in the youth room, we've got a cross, and we've got a whole bunch of river rock that, that symbolized problems and fear and anger and, and, and with fear and anger and cutting and, 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 and you don't think you're pretty and, and whatever your problems in life that the kids may have. I got a pile of rocks that's knee high at the foot of that cross where they'd come and dump their buckets out. But God showed me something a few weeks back or a month or so back about that. They said, son, there's something missing from the foot of that cross. I see where we've put our, our, our rocks and our problems and our stones and our pains and our hurts and our sorrows. I see you've dumped them all out. I said, son, my cross isn't a landfill. We've turned it into a landfill. He said, son, what's missing from the foot of that cross? He said, you are. We dump our problems out for God to handle. But we don't leave ourselves there for God to fix. We lay ourselves before the altar. We lay ourselves before the cross. Our problems go away. We're doing it backwards. Lay all your cares on the altar. Bring all your problems to the altar. Bring all your sorrows to the altar. No, bring your own messed up self to the altar and lay yourself down and let God fix that problem and you won't have anything to carry around in your Home Depot bucket anymore because he'll fix it. We've turned the foot of the cross and the altar into a dumping ground for our problems and that's not what it's for. It's for us. It's for us to see our reflection in who we are. Because what you see is what somebody else sees. If you see junk, they see junk. You see a bad hair day, they see a bad hair day. Whatever you see, they see. When Simba finally saw his father's reflection in him, and he realized he'd forgotten who he was, Y'all know what happened? Simba went back. And when Simba went back, he went back, he was on a mission. He didn't go back to shake hands and say hello and say I'm sorry for what I did. He didn't go back to give anybody any explanation or excuse for why he left. Simba went back to whip Scar and to take back what was his. That's why he went back. And when he went back, people started to see him. Nala saw him. They had a little thing going. Nala and Simba had a little thing going. The first part of this movie, when you watch it, Mufasa and Simba's mama, they held Simba up. Just like this at the very front of this movie. Giving him, here you go. He was predestined to be who he was supposed to be. He was predestined to be king. Simba goes back. Simba's grown. Simba saw his father in him. When he approached Scar, does anybody know what Scar said? Mufasa? Let me say that again. When Scar saw Simba, Scar went, Mufasa? Yeah. Simba saw, or Scar saw his father in him. Because Simba saw his father in him. And Simba realized that his father Mufasa lived inside of him forever. At that point, that gave him the strength and the power and the authority and the knowledge and the security and everything that he needed to go back and take over his inheritance, which was pride rock that was predestined to him to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. 
And Scar, the one that took it from him and lied to him about it, he saw God. He didn't see weak little Simba. So when you realize God is in your life and you see yourself, when you look and see yourself and you see him, there ain't nothing that can stop you. Nothing, nothing can stop you. Y'all are way too quiet this morning. Have y'all ever roared in your life? Have you ever let out a roar? I mean a deep roar from deep down inside that just exerted your authority on who you were and what you've got. When I walk into a room, I want to command attention. I want people to see me. But I want them to see God. I don't want them to see this. I want them to see me standing here and see nothing but Him. But I, one thing's got to happen first. I've got to look in this mirror. And I've got to see him first. And then everything else changes. So, so Simba goes back. And he puts a whoop down on Scar. But Simba doesn't actually kill Scar. Did y'all catch that in the movie? Simba don't actually kill Scar. During the movie, Scar had lied to those hyenas. He had lied to them. So when Simba came back, Scar failed. Just like Mufasa, he failed. Simba raised his head up. He lived. The fall from Simba and the fight didn't kill him. His own lies and his own self killed him because the hyenas killed, killed Scar. The ones that had followed him and believed his lies, they killed him. Simba never did, but Simba won. He won. The final words in this movie, the final words in this movie says remember. It's the final spoken word. That Mufasa spoke. Simba's defeated Scar and reclaimed the Pride Lands. And Mufasa spoke to him as he reached the tip of Pride Rock. The Bible's loaded with this command. God tells his people to remember who they are, who he is, and what he has done for them. He commands us to build pillars and altars of remembrance to him. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he pronounced. Humans are forgetful. Lord, how mercy are we forgetful. We forget where our keys are. We forget where our wallet's at. We forget what we're supposed to get at the store. And we forget who we are. And this movie shook me up, and I've watched it a bunch of times. Because I was Simba. Has anybody ever roared? So when Simba goes back, what happens? Nadine?
Simba came back. Simba took his place as king. And you can look at this many different ways. Simba returned home. You can look at it the way that I have as the, the fight that Simba had for who he was and, and didn't see himself. And then you can watch this last part of the movie. As Simba comes home and he lets out his roar. And one thing that this clip doesn't show <laughs> when Simba steps up top, every other animal bowed down to the king. They bowed down to the king. I'm so glad that one day I'll bow down to him. But I first got to find my place in my pride rock. I've got four pride rocks up here. and We're going to do our prayer partners here in a few minutes and people can come and, 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 and you can figure out who you are. I was not the right person for a long time. I lived as Simba trying to figure out who he was. I lived it. Prayer partners, y'all come on down. Some of the kids, if you're, I've talked to some of you, come on up. Don't make me come get y'all. Michael, come up here. Joshua, come up here with your mama. Raven, come up here. Any of the other uh, normal prayer partners, y'all come on up and help. For a long time, I lived my life as scar. Trying to take and be something I wasn't. And blame others and make other people feel bad. I finally realized I was Simba. And I tried to stay hid. This movie shook me to the core because of what I used to be. And I'm so thankful that that's not who I am anymore. I've realized who I am and I see, not always, but I see God in me some. Not as much as I'd like, Michael, but I see God in me sometimes. I feel God in me all the time, but I don't always see it. So as we come up and as we pray, I want you to look at who you are. Before you pray, find a mirror and just look. Look at your reflection and see what you see. Because for a long time, me as Simba, I was that guy. I speak from experience, running and hiding from your past. So I had something I was calling my mic drop moment. Nadine, put it up. There's Simba. That was your youth pastor. That was me. That's a mug shot. I was Simba running from who I was in the world doing things I shouldn't be doing. Not very nice to be around. But God took that. That's what I saw when I looked in that mirror. But the little baboon in my life, the baboon in my life saw this when I did it. And when I finally, finally looked harder, I didn't see that anymore. And it went away. It went away. And it was gone. Because now I stand here, called by God to share my story 
and to share his story through a kid's movie called The Lion King. I found my pride rock. And now I'm ready to roar. As y'all stand, as Lindsay, as they start to sing. Figure out, don't leave here not knowing who you are. Find one of these youth. Some of these youth can pray it for you. Find somebody to pray. better than I was. Y'all must already know who you are. Because God didn't have me bring these mirrors up here for decoration. There's people that need these. You may have never accepted Christ in your life at all. Today's the day for that. Today's the day for that. If that's what you choose, choose Him. Because He gave His life saving you from the stampede. When you got off and doing things that you shouldn't do and you got yourself hung up in that stampede, He gave His life saving you. So y'all sing, y'all come.